Hello, everybody. So today I just want to report on Hims and Teladoc because Teladoc reported its earnings and the stock was down 25% today, mostly on disappointing long-term revenue outlook. That's mostly the reason why this stock was down. Um, interesting, I put these two charts because Hims and Hims recovered by the end of the day quite a bit, but at at, at, at the earlier times of the day, Hims and Teladoc were trading kind of in tandem, and Hims was falling in sympathy to Teladoc's fall of 25% because in the eyes of shareholders, these are both, you know, remote doctor companies, right? But they're very different companies. They're fundamentally different companies. And it's funny when you look at the chart, right, the six-month chart, it looks as though uh, Teladoc and Hims were trading uh, in unison, pretty highly correlated up until we just got the earnings from Teladoc. Teladoc's down 25%. We'll see what Hims does. I'm very positive about the future of Hims, as you know, on the channel. Um, but, you know, I used to own Teladoc too and, and just... just Hims and studying Hims made me way less bullish on Teladoc because the point of studying this industry is yes, healthcare needs to be disrupted. There's going to be a major disruptor of healthcare out there, and healthcare being the doctors, being the pharmacies, and being the insurances. That's the block that I call healthcare. That's going to be disrupted. The question is, is that disruption going to come from the inside, i.e. Teladoc, or is it going to come from the outside, i.e. a company like Hims and or Hims? I believe Hims is well positioned to actually revolutionize a good chunk of earlier on in life type of healthcare, preventative type of healthcare, actually what I call healthcare. So let me just show you a few differences and as to why I say they're not the same because there's a theme of this video telling you how they're not the same. So if you compare Hims, uh, a little bit of history, Hims was founded in November 2017. So effectively, the company really just started in 2018. It's an app first, mobile first, mobile native, app native company. Teladoc, you know, it's called Teladoc because it was founded in 2002 tell a doc, telephone a doc. It's kind of like a 1-800 type company. So Teladoc is a, is a telephone native company. I think that's one of, one, of, one of the major differences. By the way, if you look at the logo, you can clearly see a telephone in the logo, at least in the old old ways that telephones used to be uh, used to be shown. You remember the dial, the round dial. So that's the reason. So so this is a company that pivoted to online, but didn't used to always be online. Hims, of course, being a much younger company, it's founder-led. Teladoc being, being a 22-year-old company is not founder-led anymore. Um, Teladoc is an old company now. Um, Teladoc, of course, has had a precipitous fall. I mean, this company has fallen so hard since 2021. That was a high flyer. So now the market cap of Teladoc, if you ask me, is extremely low at 2.59. Um, that doesn't change the fact that Hims also, if you ask me, has too low of a market cap. These two companies are very low market caps. That's 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 uh, the, the low valuation of these companies, you know, it's true for both companies. I find both companies uh, highly undervalued. In my view, uh, Hims, uh, Hims is, is obviously going to be much more compelling to a hyper-growth investor like myself because not only is it undervalued, but you got growth. But Teladoc, I could see why a value investor would love that valuation. It's very low valuation. It's trading actually below sales. You know, uh, there's more sales than the market cap of a company, right? But where Teladoc is a problem for me is on their growth. And that's very reason why their stock was down 25% today, the growth outlook was mid to low single digit sales growth over the next three years. So mid to low single digits, what is that between one and 5% growth in sales every year for the next three years. That is very low. That is that is just about the rate of the economy. That's all it is. So this company is going to stay flat um, in terms of how much of a share of the spend it's getting. It's not going to grow much more. And analysts they haven't revised the growth target, but they will. But the analysts on the stock are predicting only 6% growth in the next 12 months. And obviously, this is going to be revised down uh, ever so slightly because they just got it 1 through 5%. And if you compare this to Hims, we realize we're talking about entirely different games. Uh, Hims predicted $1.2 billion as a bare minimum by December of 2025. We would find this in February of 2026 is when we would know. So... 
not quite a doubling, but almost a doubling. I happen to believe that they will double in that same entire period. My guess is 1.2 billion is they'll be there by July 2025, perhaps even earlier on if they're ranking in the App Store and if the success uh, of their weight loss uh, offering is to be believed. Hims, if you look at the forward growth estimate from analysts, and analysts tend to be, you know, bearish, at least compared to me on most, most stocks. That's why I use their estimates, because they are bearish, so I want to be conservative. Analysts are only predicting 59% growth over the next 12 months for Hims. By the way, if you haven't seen it, this is the long-term guidance that Hims provided us uh, three quarters ago. That's what they are predicting to do. And if you look at the valuation, the way I value stocks in my spreadsheet and you can see I was, I was generous uh, for Teladoc giving them the five percent so the higher end of their guidance predicting five percent revenue growth of Teladoc um, you know like I said once again the stock is not expensive Teladoc is not expensive at a 0.36 that's not an expensive stock but the rule of 40 is ridiculous you get a six on the rule of 40 because they only have one percent of EBITDA margin 71 percent gross margin that's good right there but one percent EBITDA margin so if you have, you have the 1% EBITDA margin plus 5% of revenue growth, you only get a 6% in the rule of 40. Hims shine with 59% of revenue growth, 5% EBITDA already, but they posted this past quarter, so you're at a 64% on the rule of 40. And when you do the the my, my spin on the peg ratio, right? And by now, if you follow the channel, you know this, EV over gross profit over revenue growth, which is my spin on the peg ratio, but using gross profit instead of earnings and revenue growth instead of earnings growth. When I do that, I get I get a stock for Hims that is seven times cheaper. I, when I growth adjusted, adjusted for future growth, I view Hims as a company that is seven times cheaper than a Teladoc. Or said another way, what would be Teladoc's valuation? How, how what what would be Teladoc trading as at trading at if it was growing at fifty nine percent next twelve months? How where would they be trading at? And I consider this stock to be a slow grower for the following fundamental reasons, which is they don't have a clear vision in the eyes of the consumer because they acquire customers, Teladoc acquires customers through insurance. Hims thrives by undercutting insurance, by entirely removing the insurance uh, out of the loop. And analysts may consider this a negative. In fact, I've, I've seen a few comments from analysts seeing this as a negative. I look at this as not a negative at all. Because you don't go through the insurance system, there's zero insurance complexity, zero wondering whether your insurance is going to cover him or not, you know, Right away, insurance not covering HIMS, and HIMS, of course, shines by having clear pricing. If you happen to be eligible for a prescription, they have a clear pricing, and it's cheaper than copays. Tell a doc, you're left wondering, does my insurance cover it? If my insurance cover it, is it covered as a physician's visit? What is it covered as? What does my insurance cover? You never know. That's the, tr the, 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 the stereotypical, traditional uh, healthcare system in the United States. You you don't know. You may get a bill later on. Hims has clear upfront pricing. You know exactly what you're going to pay. Um, uh, with Teladoc, it's it, it's still it's still a question mark, right? You have to you have to go into the the master agreement of your a a insurance company, uh, which I looked the other day for my insurance. Uh, my insurance, the, the, the master agreement is something like 180 pages so you need to have it loaded in, you you need to have it loaded in chat gpt and perhaps inquire chat gpt about it because who's going to read 170 or 180 pages of text right so this is not clear what you're going to be charged with him it's very very clear you're going to be charged you know r roughly if you're eligible roughly 50 bucks a month for whatever you may need um, if you're not eligible you're not charged anything and then you just use the, the hims app for education and some witty content and funny videos once in a while um, they have they have a very uh, proper way i believe hims they promote themselves in a in a very gen z very millennial type way and they try to resonate much more with a younger consumer which is why if you look at a company like hims they almost exclusively focus on early on, preventative, before it gets too bad, 
care. This is kind of my way of of of, of calling what Hims does. It's all it's all earlier on stuff. It's all preventive. It's before it gets too bad, right? You know, uh, ED, which is still the main products of Hims. ED is what is a precursor of heart disease, cardiovascular problem. If you have ED in your thirties or in your late twenties, you better get that treated. And if you get that treated early enough you'll be lucky enough, likely, to not have heart disease when you're in your 60s because it's a precursor, right? So that's why a lot of the innovation they have is about making sure that you don't get to a stage where you have to use your health insurance, right? Where you have to use what I call, in the case of TDOC, this is not just TDOC, this is a traditional healthcare system, sick care. If you actually use a healthcare company, you're not going to be using a sick care insurance later on. The current system of healthcare that we have, if you really think about it, is excellent at things like curing cancer, things like dealing with our disease, putting a stent in, complex diseases. It shines, but really should we call this healthcare? You know, in my view, I want to call this sick care. Healthcare is care towards your current health and necessarily intervenes earlier on, which is why I love HIMSS. I think I think HIMSS has, has almost a zero to one move on, on, on this and treating people, people early, having almost a consumer brand approach to lower stakes healthcare. This is lower stakes in the case of HIMSS. You know, the, the, the stuff that they provide are, are, are really lower stake. If you look at, say, for example, their weightless drug, well, it provides metformin. Metformin is one of the oldest, most prescribed, most well-known drugs out there, right? It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not the cutting edge of sick care. You're, you're really dealing with early, early on and early signs of diseases. And the question of Hims versus Teladoc is, yes, so there's going to be a revolution in healthcare. I fundamentally believe, uh, you know, healthcare, just like education, just like face-to-face commerce, it's going to get disrupted, just like insurance. It, it's going to get disrupted. The question is, where is that disruption coming from? And I believe they have a fundamental di- different approach, these two companies, on the disruption of legacy healthcare. HIMS, in my view, is attacking healthcare on the outside, from the outside, from an app, right? So they have an app, and the app is a digital pharmacy. We don't need 45,000 physical pharmacies in the United States in the era of five-hour shipping. There's no need for, you know, tens of thousands of pharmacies. There's 45,000 of them. Think about the cost that is eliminated if you just use a giant automated warehouse. HIMSS has two, one in Phoenix, one in Columbus. HIMSS has two giant automated pharmacy warehouses that ship the goods. You undercut potentially 45,000 pharmacies when you do that. Digital doctors. So what is a digital doctor? You see a doctor, the doctor is just sitting in their living room. Just just, just, just a Zoom call. It's a Zoom call. That's all it is. You don't, you don't need to have giant healthcare facilities. And you know, wherever your town is, your local health system it's very likely it's going to look like a real estate empire in disguise, right? You don't do any of that, and both of these companies are, are tackling this problem of saying, well, wait a minute, we don't need to have to have this this this, um, this real estate empire in disguise running our healthcare because most of it can be handled digitally, and there's still some of it that you have to handle in person, but as tools get better, tools like the Apple Watch, for example, and, you know, at-home healthcare devices or health devices, at-home health devices, as they get better, we're going to need less and less, less and less, less and less physical interaction with your doctor and for your care. And HIMSS is fighting that. So digital pharmacy is is both for HIMSS and Teladoc, uh, digital doctors, sorry. Digital pharmacy is just a HIMSS thing. Digital doctors is both, um, both falls under the purview of HIMSS and Teladoc. And then you have insurance. And insurance is yet again a, a HIMSS thing entirely. Insurance is out. Insurance is out of the loop. They don't want to be slowed down by the reimbursement process. It could take months to get your money back with insurance companies, right? Um, it's, it's the plague of healthcare to actually have a patient show up and you don't charge them right away because they have, insur- they have insurance. And then you find out their insurance only, only covered X and you wanted the insurance cover, to cover X, Y, and Z. And then you, you're left having to, you know, send letters to the patient and say, hey, hey, you, you, you got to pay, you got to pay. But you send the letter six weeks later, 
right? That's kind of a, how a system works. Teladoc has a different view on how it's going to fight the legacy healthcare and how it is fighting the, uh, the legacy healthcare. It's it's fighting it from the inside, right? The advantage is you have millions, and they have actually more than 100 million, if I'm not mistaken, of potential clients right away through deals with with uh, the big health agencies, you know, the Blue Cross Blue Shield, the Aetna, the Humana. They have deals with those, so they have potential millions of clients right away, but they still have to create incentives from the inside so that these clients pick a Teladoc doctor as opposed to just going to the local health system. And so what is the disadvantage of this approach, disrupting it from the inside, is that you have to move at the speed of reimbursement and the speed of insurance. And there's a strong incentive for the health sector to protect itself. We are witnessing, in my view, a return to the doctor's office behavior because of this real estate, because of this vested interest in real estate. Um, we are seeing this in the traditional healthcare world, just like we are seeing this in the traditional office space, office work type of employee jobs. And so it's two different approaches from to, to fighting healthcare and revolu revolutionizing healthcare. But it, it, uh, if you follow the channel, you know, my bet is on HIMSS. I think HIMSS has a much better odds at, revol at revolutionizing healthcare. And even him, if, even if, if, even if HIMSS doesn't quote unquote do anything or revolutionize sick care or healthcare altogether, it is still creating a, you know, what we call a white space opportunity. It's still creating its own opportunity, its own induced demand by going after the, the preventative, the early on segment of care that is all too often not uh, not addressed by the current health systems. And so that's why I'm very bullish on him. Um, but Teladoc, if you're a value investor, I understand why you like it. Anyways, uh, this was not investment advice. This is just entertainment. Uh, I hope you were entertained. No financial advice. Please like, please subscribe, please follow me on X. And thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.